So let's get started. Um, to kick us off, I'm delighted to welcome Justin Johnson, uh, Johnson Chief Mo Mobility Officer um, for the state of Michigan. I would I just ask um, Justin, state of Michigan is the first state to have a Chief Mo Mobility Officer. So welcome, uh, Justin. <laughs> Justin lead um, Michigan's Office of Future Mobility um, uh, and Electrification uh, in working across the state government, academia, uh, private industry to enhance the state mobility ecosystem, developing, um, um, including developing dynamic mobility and electrification, electrification um, policies, and supporting the startup and scale up the emerging mobility technology and business. Justine is an accomplished um, economic development and mobility executive with more than 10 years of experience in external affairs, strategy and um, government and community relations. Prior joining um, Team Michigan, Justin was appointed um, to the Los Angeles County Aviation Commission to advise the Los Angeles County um, Board of Supervisors uh, on the operation and development of county's five airports. She also served as, as the Director of Member Engagement at the California Mobility Center. Justin holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in Political Science um, and government, and she has two masters of arts degree from the University of Southern California in urban planning and public administration. Um, she, since uh, she arrived in Michigan last year, Justin um, seems to be in high demand um, for every event related to future mobility and transportation. So we are lucky to have her with us um, today. Welcome, Justin. Good morning, everyone. Oh, I don't know if you all are awake yet. Good morning, everybody. It's getting a little bit better. So my name is Justine Johnson, and I am the Chief Mobility Officer for the state of Michigan. I am pleased to be here with you all today um, for the 2024 M-City Congress. I've actually recently learned that this is the first time this group is reconvening in person since 2019, so it's such a pleasure to be in this space with you all today. Um, on my drive here, uh, and before I get into the work, I, I like to just start off with a little story. So on my drive here, I was taking some time to reflect on what does it mean for AI to really be a part of the transportation and mobility industry. And while I was thinking about this topic and driving my car, I have a Mustang Mach-E and her name is Grace. So while Grace was, Grace and I were on the road, um, I had a moment where I thought to myself and said, this car is equipped with a number of cameras and sensors and radar technology, which really allow this vehicle to do some things that you know, again, most people would never think the future of cars could look like. For example, while I don't feel like doing the work of driving sometimes, I click a button and the vehicle starts to take over from all things maneuvering to lane detection and lane keeping, um, situational awareness of all of the other cars on the road around me. There's all of these things that are happening. There's a lot of data that's going back and forth between what's happening in the built environment and as well as me as an uh, as operator. The best part of my uh, technology is that I get an alert. If my hands are not on the wheel or if my eyes are not on the road, properly so that I can make sure that I am driving as safely as possible. As I think about AI in particular, it's moments like these where I think about the opportunity to re reimagine the experiences that people have when operating vehicles and also reimagining the experiences of those outside of the vehicle. This is such an important time for us to really think about this technology and how it will be utilized, but most importantly, how we can change experiences for all users on the roadway to ensure safety and as well as um, efficiency of moving through the built environment. So now that I've shared my morning thoughts with you, uh, I'd like to spend some time getting into the work that's happening within the state of Michigan. As mentioned before, as Chief Mobility Officer, I do have the privilege of leading the Office of Future Mobility and Electrification. 
And while I know this title may sound like, hmm, what exactly do you do? I'd like to make sure we ground ourselves in a definition of mobility, because I'm sure if we took a poll around the room, we'd all say something different. As a part of our office, we define mobility as utilizing clean energy to move people, goods, and information across land, water, and air. As an office, our goal is very clear. We are focused on fostering a stronger state economy by advancing safe, accessible, equitable, and zero emissions transportation for all Michiganders. We are uniquely positioned as an office, as mentioned before by Henry, this is the first office of its kind in the United States. So we are uniquely positioned between four different state departments, which allows us direct access to focus on topics pertaining to labor and workforce, the economy, the environment, and as well as infrastructure. So all of these state departments help us to make sure our work is possible. In October of 2022, we unveiled the MI, MI, because everything we like to do starts with MI, um, Future Mobility Plan, which is a comprehensive roadmap that is anchored by three core pillars and 11 strategic goals. These goals are truly designed to drive us towards a future world where we can actually have a robust mobility ecosystem and the workforce to support that. It also focuses on making sure that we have the infrastructure in place to support all things around charging and more. And lastly, it's about policy that focuses on ensuring and enabling companies to grow and thrive in the state of Michigan. As we move forward, I am truly proud to lead the charge in implementing the initiatives that have been outlined in the mobility plan and also focusing on aligning with the state's broader goals for carbon neutrality by 2050. Now, by show of hands, how many people in this room are companies that may be looking for funding or if you are an innovator, can you raise your hand? Be brave, be brave. Let, yes, I love that, I love that. That's great. I'm glad that you are here and I'm glad that you are in this space. I want to spend some time, if you've raised your hand, please take your phone or your notebook out because I wanna share some funding opportunities that might be of interest to you. First, our office has an initiative which we call our grant funding program called the, My, the Michigan Mobility Funding Platform, Michigan Mobility Funding Platform. Through this funding platform, companies are able to apply for grant funding to test and deploy technologies in the built environment or at a test site like M-City. We also have another initiative which is focusing on prototyping. One of the quick things that I've learned while moving to Michigan last August is that this is a state of makers and doers. And so we have launched a prototype grant program to allow companies to apply for grant funding to prototype new technologies and as well as hard tech development. Um, I think this is so important because it is truly the parts and the pieces that really make the future of mobility possible and build the future mobility form factors. We also have another program. If you're into advanced aerial mobility and aviation, we have an advanced aerial mobility activation fund. As part of this fund, this is again for companies who are working in advanced air mobility to uh, apply for grant funding for infrastructure and as well as pilots to support AAM activities throughout the state. So this is really intended to accelerate the development and as well the deployment of, ex of advanced aerial mobility and technologies within the state of Michigan. So now that we have the funding down, and I hope everyone got some notes and happy to follow up if you missed it, um, I'd like to bring us to what's happening on the land. Um, and first and foremost, I just want to, to highlight something that I'm extremely proud of. In November of 2023, we did the unthinkable and what most would say impossible. We launched the first wireless EV charging roadway in the United States of America. This is something that we should feel very proud of and very accomplished as many states could not figure it out, but we figured out a way of making that possible. So we should feel proud of leading in this space. This road is located in uh, Detroit's Corktown neighborhood, and this infrastructure is really redefining public spaces as shared and electric energy platforms. So really am proud of that. 
We also have test sites like M City and another place that I'm really a, proud to be a part of because this is really activating the entire mobility ecosystem from academia to early stage companies to industry incumbents. This is a space where autonomous and connected vehicle testing can happen at a proving ground and it's open for companies from all around the world. And so really proud of the work of M City and as well as the companies that have been locating at this, uh, at this test site. This summer, we are launching a 10-mile autonomous electric vehicle shuttle pilot program in the city of Detroit, and it is called The Connect. Uh, and as part of this is a partnership between the Office of Future Mobility and Electrification, uh, Michigan Central, and as well as Bedrock. And essentially, this partnership is allowing us to provide service between Michigan Central and Detroit's East Riverfront communities. And so really proud to deploy this technology. These vehicles will also be wheelchair accessible to allow for people who have a diverse set of mobility needs to be a part of this process and journey with us. Michigan has also partnered with neighboring states as well to create the Lake Michigan EV circuit. Um, and one fun fact that I always like to remind folks is that there are 1,100 drivable miles along Lake Michigan. And so really this is an opportunity for us to partner with other states to ensure that there is a seamless experience for those who are looking to charge their vehicles while driving along Lake Michigan. So this is really to support um, ecotourism and allow for sustainable and seamless uh, EV charging experiences. We also are doing work in the space of outdoor innovation. And through our partnership and grant funding to companies like Polaris and Electric Outdoors, this work is truly possible to provide grid independent EV solutions for those who are visiting our national parks and as well as those who are utilizing off-road vehicles. Now that we've talked a little bit about some of the work that's happening on the land, let's take it to the water. And so one of the fun parts about this work is that, again, this breadth of mobility also includes uh, not only um, traditional automotive and as well as operations on the land, but also now we're going to spend some time in the maritime space. Uh, through our Fresh Coast Maritime Challenge, we provide assistance to companies that are focusing on decarbonizing and electrifying marinas and watercrafts in Michigan. And I think it's so important because this is an opportunity for those companies who have EV uh, and electric vessel, excuse me, EV in this space, not vehicle, but vessel technologies to deploy um, in Northern Michigan. And for example, in Elk Rapids, we do have an electric vessel charging station, DC fast charging station, where those who are utilizing recreational boats can charge their vessels. And really this is building out a network of electric vessel charging stations throughout Northern Michigan. Another place that I'd like to take us now that we talked about one of the activities that are happening, and there's so much more that's happening in, on the water as well, but now let's elevate to the air. And another interesting um, component of our work uh, is that we have a program, and this is in partnership with the Gerald R. Ford Airport and Southwest Airlines for a program called FLIGHT, which stands for Ford Launchpad for Innovative Technologies and Entrepreneurship. This is also known as flights, just really easy. But uh, the easy way to remember this is that this is another example of a test site that has uh, been focused on all things uh, around the airport. And really, some of the companies that have gone through the flight program include a and now probably 19 year old student who is from Grand Rapids who created an app called Spotter. And essentially he took frustration of getting to hockey games on time to innovation. And as part of that, this app called Spotter allows for people to uh, essentially scan a QR code and be directed to a place of where to park once they get to the airport. So that's one particular example. There are other examples of autonomous wheelchair technologies to allow for people who are going from uh, their vehicle uh, and again, having a seamless experience once they're in the airport setting itself. And really an autonomous wheelchair is another example of how AI and machine learning are really helping to uh, create better and improved experiences for those who are visiting our airports. 
Another piece of technology is autonomous lawn mowing. And most people, when you look outside of the plane, and you might not think about it, but there is an abundance of grass. And as part of that, we really want to make sure that we can focus on detecting, um, making sure that the grass is, is actually properly mowed to detract any wildlife or any type of animals from the airport itself. So really to ensure safe operations at the airport setting. Again, these are just some examples of some of the companies that are deploying new technologies and services, which do have the potential and a ripple effect across the state when we think about new opportunities and new uh, customer experiences. Also, as it relates to advanced aerial mobility, we have launched uh, the Advanced Aerial Innovation Region, which is a three-mile drone testing radius around Michigan Central. And this really does position the state of Michigan as a leader in advanced aerial mobility and as well allows for those who are looking to test uh, drone technology in a uh, controlled testing environment. One of the things that's very unique for those who may have visited Michigan Central is its proximity to the international border. And so there's so many opportunities, as we said before, um, of really looking at uh, use cases that can really propel our future forward. So lastly, I will say, let us not forget about people. And while this technology is cool and it sounds and it's and it is very innovative and sounds like there's so much happening, which there there is, we really want to make sure that we center this work around the people. And so the office has created a My Mobility Fellows program, which is really focusing on attracting and as well as retaining talent in the state of Michigan. This is the first time our office has done this, and so our first cohort will be going live in October of this year. And essentially, this is a program for recent college graduates, so those who have graduated in 2024 or two years prior, so 2022, can apply for this program. We are currently in the process of selecting our host partners, so there are host partners who have applied. There are two tracks, part of this program, one track being working with a transportation organization or transportation agency and an economic development organization. So we'll have fellows located around the state there. And then another track is focusing on uh, innovators in society. So essentially um, working with early stage companies and innovators, we want to make sure that those uh, recent graduates who are interested in learning from a startup or is interested in learning about how a startup has approach their work to deployment and commercialization. We really want to augment that capacity but provide a meaningful experience. So we're very excited about that. Um, additionally, we've partnered with Michigan Department of Transportation on a $15 million equitable mobility grant challenge. And this is really focused on mobility gaps and really making sure that we are improving access to education, to jobs, to housing, and to fresh fruits and vegetables, and specifically being very intentional about serving underserved communities. And so this is another way in which we are centering the technology around the work of and work of people, but also making sure that we improve their experiences. While we are making great strides, our work is far from complete. And collaboration is really key to the success of this state. We have to partner together like no other. We must continue to identify opportunities that enable a holistic approach to mobility and clean technologies for all. As we move forward, let's remember that our collective efforts and determination can shape a brighter future. Let's embrace the challenges that lie ahead of us because they are big, they are large, they are complex, but when we work together, we can make the impossible possible. Let's embrace this work with empathy, with intentionality, and as well as with courage. This is going to require us to be bold, to think differently, to ask the hard questions, to be uncomfortable, to, to really lean on another person or another company that we probably may not have ever talked to before. This is that time. Together, we can build a tomorrow that surpasses our wildest dreams. And with that, I just want to express my gratitude for your time here, your commitment to the state of Michigan, and as well as our shared vision where all Michiganders have a chance and an opportunity to live, work, and thrive. And with that being said, thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the event today.